quickly to Je Genesis chapter 50, a very familiar passage of scriptures. Yes, ma'am. Matter of fact, one of my favorite people in the Bible is in this is in this chapter, uh -huh. Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20. It says, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, Talk but this. God meant it unto my good, my to bring to pass, as in this day, to save much people alive. I want to look at two words in this text, and those two words are, but God. Look at somebody and say, but God. But God. Somebody ought to jerk, somebody ought to scream, somebody ought to holler the shout it right there, because the my God. Oh, look yeah, at so said, yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to look over the neighbor and I want you to tell your neighbor, 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 neighbor. You look real good tonight. You look real good and tonight. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. That it's all right. That it's, it's all right. Because God. Because God. He meant it. He meant it. God meant it. We see this man by the name of Joseph. And Joseph, he had a very interesting life. I love it. He had a very uh, 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 eventful life. He had uh -huh. a lot of things going on in his life. And in Genesis chapter 37, we find Joseph. He's introduced. He's 17 years old. He's one of his father's favorites. He's hated by his brothers. And he goes through a lot of things in this chapter. Well, you know the story, so I wouldn't dare just go through the story and take a long time. You know the story of Joseph and how his brothers saw him in the distance coming to help them and they despised against him and they decided, we're going to throw him in this pit. But then Reuben changed his mind. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Changed his mind and said, no, we should just sell him into this pop, into, into these people, into these Egyptians. And they went and they sold him. And I found out that in Genesis chapter 37, what Joseph had made up in his mind was that things may hurt you, but they're going to help you. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, things may hurt you, but they're going to help you. He didn't give up. He didn't throw in the towel. You didn't see him complaining. You didn't see him asking God, why, why me? Why this? Why that? He decided he was going to go through. And he realized that just like in Isaiah 40 and 31, well, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It never said that you weren't going to go through. It never said that you weren't going to face some trials and tribulations. It said just while you're going through, just remember to wait. Look at somebody and say, just remember to wait. Remember, remember to wait. wait. To Genesis 39. You remember when he was in prison. He was thrown in prison for some accusations against him. He was a very innocent man. He really didn't do much. He was thrown in prison and he was willing to wait while he was in prison. Look at somebody say, wait while you're in prison. Wait while you're in prison. It may seem like you're in bondage. It may seem like things are going bad. It may seem like nothing is falling into place. It may seem like every time you turn around, somebody is talking about you. I trust me. I know every time it seems like I'm doing good and I'm on the right path and I'm blessing others and I'm preaching and I'm singing and I'm praise dancing and it seems like the more I do that, the more people talk about me. The more I do that, the more people come up against me. But when you're going through it, when it seems like you're in prison, yeah. you got to be willing to wait. you got to be willing to wait. He, I believe he said to himself, Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Look at somebody say, just wait. Wait. You gotta be willing to wait. And I believe that over in, I'm almost done, I believe that over in Genesis 50, where I read to you, yeah. he had gotten to a place, he was over all of the events that happened in his life. He had his money, his dream came to pass. Y'all remember his dream? His dream came to pass, and he was, his father had died, and he was there, and he was chilling, and he was waiting on the Lord. And he realized that everything he had gone through was worth the fight. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. it'll be worth the Fight. I don't mean to be crazy or I, I'm not trying to cuss at you, but look at somebody say WTF. WTF. It's just worth the fight. It's just oh, worth the fight. I'm telling you that when you withstand the fire, you'll be able to fight. He withstood the fire. He was able to go through without complaining, without giving up, without throwing in the towel. Bishop Robert Nichols said on yesterday that when you stop, Satan triumphs over your purpose. And there is no need for you to stop because look at somebody say it's too good. It's too good. It'll be too good for me to give up now. If I give up now, I'll be giving up on something that I'm 
my Lord, my Lord, Lord. Well, I heard the songwriter say, I've come this far. Come this far. Two more to turn around. Yes. Yeah. And I believe God. He said, it's worth the fight. And God is using your enemies to bless you. Yeah. I believe it. The Bible says in 50 and 20, in Genesis 50 and 20, that what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it. It, around, it didn't right? say God turned it around because right. for God to turn around something would mean it was going in the wrong direction. But I've come to Love tell it. you tonight that the direction you're going in, it may look like it's a little foggy, it may look like the road doesn't end. But I've come to tell you that's the right path. That's the right path. Go! 